Thank you. I um, I visited my granddad today. Not a fan of political correctness. <laughs> my granddad. I found it's very easy to annoy people who think political correctness has gone too far. Uh, like recently, I've been going to my local golf club, telling the members that they can't say handicap. <laughs> They have to say golfing accuracy disorder. <laughs> they do not like it at all. Uh, in fact, they regularly ask if I have a mental golfing accuracy disorder. <laughs> I, um, I like golf, because to win golf, you have to take the fewest shots, which means the better you are at golf, the less time you spend playing golf. <laughs> That's a nice idea. Uh, the better you are at an activity, the less time you spend doing that activity. Uh, when you're really good at something, you do it for a very short amount of time. If an activity doesn't last long, it actually means you're really good at the activity. Uh, the shorter the activity lasts, the better you are at the activity. If you finish in three strokes, you're like the best. At the activity, if you finish in one stroke, you get a trophy. Like, <laughs> who cares if you have a small club? Sometimes it's fun to play mini golf, you know. Like, maybe you've been doing the activity with the same partner for like ten years, and sometimes you get confused and like you were aiming for the green, but you ended up in the bunker. And <laughs> like, sometimes you don't even know the rules of the activity. Like, if I touch someone else's ball, is that cheating? And like. <laughs> Then you think maybe it's a good idea to like open things up, try the activity with other people. <laughs> so you go out and you find a nice couple and like they're really good at the activity, like they have incredible technique, like phenomenal swingers and <laughs> they teach you a lot about yourself, like the fact that you actually quite enjoy playing the back nine and like <laughs> you don't know why that's what you like and you you think about it a lot and like yeah you went to an all boys school and you don't think <laughs> that has anything to do with it, but then again, like maybe it does, right? Like there was that time in year nine where Damo, Stevens, Dak, Tommy Robinson and everything came off and it wasn't the worst thing you've ever seen, you know? And like... <laughs> anyway, that's why I like golf. Um, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I don't like the outdoors in general. Um, there's a lot of outdoorsy hobbies. I just do not understand, uh, like four-wheel driving. Um, if you haven't been four-wheel driving, it's where four men try and get a $100,000 Land Cruiser out of a hole that they drove it into. <laughs> um, it's just using cars in situations that are not suitable for cars. Um, I have a mate, he's really into four-wheel driving. He showed me a video of him driving through a river it was like it was crazy. Water was up to the bonnet. Didn't think we'd get across. But then we did. I was like, man. Wait till you hear about boats. <laughs> uh, don't understand fishing. Either. If you haven't been fishing, to a four men spend an entire day Getting new Tinder profile pictures. <laughs> uh, just a maritime photo shoot. Uh, every fishing boat looks identical. It's always a small tinny packed with about 15 rods. Occasionally you'll get a Darren, but it is mostly rods. Uh, all the rods, they'll be wearing shirts that have pictures of fish on them. In case they forget what they're looking for. <laughs> That was weird. <laughs> I'm wearing a shirt with a picture on it of something you spend ages looking for. I don't go around wearing shirts with pictures of the clitoris on them. <laughs> they're, uh, they're an interesting species, the rod. Uh, their self-worth is inherently tied to their ability to reverse a trailer. Uh, this is one of the first questions they will ask. They're like, can you reverse a trailer? I'm like, no. 
but I can process emotions without punching drywall. <laughs> Rod's, uh, they're always kissing the fish they catch too. Which must be very confusing for the fish. <laughs> they get violently removed from their natural habitat into an atmosphere where they can't breathe. They're seconds away from dying. And then some old man's like... <laughs> That's why dead fish's eyes are so wide. <laughs> Last thing they saw was a rod trying to hook up with them. <laughs> I um, found out recently, um, you can now get sex toys delivered on Uber Eats, which is useful. I don't know about you guys, but I schedule all my orgasms 45 to 50 minutes in advance. <laughs> um, the reason I know you can get sex toys delivered on Uber Eats is because I recently received someone else's order. Um, the other day, I ordered myself 20 McNuggets, a large fries, Coke Zero and an Oreo McFlurry. Uh, but when it arrived in the bag were 20 McNuggets, a large fries, a Coke Zero, and the greedy girl thrusting rabbit vibe. <laughs> and I saw that and I was like, wow. They've really improved the toys with Happy Meals. <laughs> It was frustrating. Because right, I didn't want a sexual aid designed to help me reach climax. That's why I ordered a McFlurry, not an apple pie. <laughs> and I wanted to explain the mix-up to the delivery guy. So I took the sex toy, I went to try and find it, but I live in an apartment building. I had to take the lift. And as it's going down, it stops. And a very attractive young woman gets in. And she's holding an Oreo McFlurry. <laughs> and she looks at what I'm holding. And I look at what she's holding. And I said, hey, I think this belongs to you. <laughs> and she looks at what I'm holding. And I look at what she's holding. And she called the police. <laughs> I got back from, uh, from overseas recently, um, travelled on an, an Airbus aircraft. Uh, if you're travelling to Australia and don't speak English very well, the Airbus must be a very confusing travel experience. Like You rock up to the airport and you're like, cool, I'm ready to get on a plane. And the airline's like, alright, you can now board the Airbus. And you're like, oh, is that the bus that takes us to the plane? <laughs> and they're like, no, it is the plane. And you're like, but you said it was a bus. And they're like, yeah, it's a bus that goes in the air. An air bus. And you're like, so you've named one method of transport after a different method of transport. And they're like, yeah, we named one method of transport after a different method of transport. And you're like, why would you do that? And they're like, are you questioning our decision making? while doing this weird act out that's confused most of the audience. <laughs> and you're like, I understand it's confusing, but there is quite a good payoff at the end. <laughs> and they're like, does it get any less confusing along the way? And you're like, absolutely not. <laughs> and then you're like, look, a, a bus is a ground-based method of transport. It has four wheels. Sometimes it has that bendy bit in the middle. It has eight wheels. And they're like, have you ever stood in that bendy bit while going around a corner? <laughs> and you're like, yeah, the floor rotates. It feels like you're standing in a microwave. <laughs> and they're like, did you know the guy who invented the microwave also invented the bendy bus? And you're like, really? And they're like, of course not. <laughs> and you're like, do you like movies? And they're like, yeah. And you're like, have you seen the 1994 action movie Speed starring Keanu Reeves? And they're like, no. And you're like, in the 1994 action movie Speed starring Keanu Reeves, there's a scene where a bus jumps over a gap in a highway. And they're like, why are you telling me this? And you're like, because that's the only time a bus has ever travelled through the air. 
And they're like, fair point. <laughs> you win the argument, naming one method of transport after a different method of transport is confusing. Do you feel vindicated? <laughs> and you do feel vindicated. <laughs> you feel powerful, <laughs> intelligent. You took on a corporate behemoth and you won. <laughs> Like some sort of airborne Aaron Brockovich. <laughs> this might be the best day of your life. So you get on the plane, travel for 24 hours. You land in Australia, jet lagged, tired, you're angry. You walk out of the terminal and you're like, right, how do I get to the city? <laughs> Someone's like, sky bus? <laughs> Fuck, that joke is a lot of work. Uh, my, name, my name is Nick Shaw. You guys have been super nice. Thank you so much. Cheers. Give it up and